Hey guys, today we are going to be reviewing equations and inequalities. So we're gonna start with simplifying expressions. So remember an expression is a mathematical combination that does not have an equal sign. We're just gonna have terms with addition and subtraction signs and maybe some parentheses. So your first step to simplify an expression is distribute if necessary, if you see parentheses. And then the next thing you do is combine like terms. So let's look at number one. I have 10x minus five plus two x minus seven. So I do not have any parentheses. I don't need to distribute. I just need to jump to combining like terms. So the x's will combine and 10x plus two x would create 12x. And then next I have the constants, negative five and negative seven. And I need to combine those. You can do that in your head or if you're struggling with that, use your calculator, negative five, and just type the sign you see, which is minus seven. And we get negative 12. So that final simplified expression is 12 X minus 12. Okay, let's look at number two. It says write the perimeter of the equilateral triangle as a simplified expression. So I can see I have three sides and they are all x plus three. So that expression would be three times x plus three for this perimeter because to find the perimeter, you just add the three sides. So all I need to do to distribute this or to simplify this is distribute that three and three times x is three x and then three times three is nine. And that is it because those are not like terms so I cannot combine any further. So those are expressions. Now we're gonna move on to solving equations. So with an equation, you're gonna have an equal sign. And the first thing you want to do is move the variables to the same side of that equal sign with inverse operations. And then after you've moved the variables to the same side, you want to move the constants to the same side with inverse operations. So you're gonna get variables on one side and constants on the other. And then your last step will be to isolate the variable with inverse operations. So let's look at this first one. I have negative two X plus 30 equals negative six X plus two. So the first thing I want to do is move the variables to the same side with inverse operations. You can move either of them first. Um, you can move either one to either side. I prefer to move the smaller one because it creates less negative. So I'm gonna circle the negative six X and I want to make a zero with the negative six X. So I'm gonna add 6x to remove it from that side to make it zero out and whatever you do to one side of the equal sign you have to do to the other. And negative 2x plus 6x is 4x and then I'm going to bring down this plus 30 equals the negative 6x plus 6x zeroed out and then I'm going to bring down the plus 2. I'm just going to put a 2. Okay, next thing I need to do is move this constant to the right side of the equation with that two. So I need to do the opposite of plus 30 to make a zero there. So I'm gonna subtract 30 from both sides. And I get four X, the 30 minus 30 zeroed out, equals two minus 30, you can use your calculator for that if you need, is negative 28. And then the last thing you need to do to get the x by itself is divide because 4x really means 4 times x and the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 and negative 28 divided by 4 is negative 7. So I get x equals negative 7 for my final answer. Okay, let's look at this next equation. What is the value of X? I have negative nine X plus one equals negative 75 plus X divided by two. So the first thing that I'm going to do is change this into a nicer number, X divided by two. Remember that X really has an invisible coefficient of one. So that's really the same thing as one half uh, X or one half times X and an even nicer way to write one half since that's a terminating decimal is 0.5 X. So I'm going to work smarter and I'm just going to go ahead and change this 
to a 0.5x. So I'm going to rewrite the equation like that. Negative 9x plus 1 equals negative 75 plus 0.5x. Okay, now I have negative 9x and I have positive 0.5x. I want to get them to the same side of the equation. The negative 9x is smaller, so I'm going to move that one. The opposite of negative 9x is plus 9x, so I'm going to add that to both sides of the equation. And negative 9x plus 9x zeroes out. I bring it down this 1 and it equals negative 75 plus 9.5x. Now the next thing I want to do is remove this constant from that x term. So I'm going to do an inverse operation with that to move it to the other side. So the opposite of negative 75 is positive 75. And 1 plus 75 is 76, and it equals negative 75 plus 75 zeros out, and I bring down the 9.5x. And my last step is to divide by 9.5, and 76 divided by 9.5 is 8. So the value of x is 8. All right, now we're going to look at writing and solving equations. So in general, the number that repeats, that happens more often, sometimes you'll see these words each every per, will have a coefficient of x to represent multiplication. So it'll be something like 3x. So we're going to write our equation and then we are going to solve it. So number five says two customers spent the same total amount of money at a bakery, Tasty Sweets. This keyword same tells you that we're probably going to be dealing with an equation with an equal sign. The first customer bought six cookies and left a $1.50 tip. The second customer bought three cookies and left a $9 tip. Both customers paid the same amount per cookie. So there's that keyword her probably tells us that the cookie amount is going to have the coefficient. And then the question says, how much does one cookie cost at Tasty Sweets in dollars and cents? So let's write an equation to represent this. It's saying that two customers spent the same amount. So the first customer equals the amount that the second customer spent. So let's write an equation for the first customer. The first customer bought six cookies. That repeats the amount uh, that a cookie is. So that's going to be 6x plus they also paid a $1.50 tip equals the second customer bought three cookies. So that would be 3x and left a $9 tip, so plus 9 for that $9 tip. So there's my equation. Now I'm going to solve for x to find out how much one cookie costs. So the first thing I notice is I have variables on both sides. 3x is smaller, so I'm going to do the opposite of that. The opposite of a positive 3x is minus 3x. And I get 3x plus $1.50 equals 3x minus 3x zeros out, and I bring down the 9. And then I subtract the $1.50, and I get 3x, I bring that down, $1.50 minus $1.50 zeros out, equals, I'm going to do 9 minus $1.50, and I get $7.50. And then the last thing I'm going to do to get x by itself is divide by 3. And 7.5 divided by 3 is 250. So x equals 250, which means it was 250 per cookie. Okay, let's look at number six. It says the perimeter of the triangle shown is 21x. What is the value of x? 
So remember to find the perimeter of a triangle, I add the three sides together. So to find the perimeter, I will add the three sides. So let's just substitute into this. They told me that the perimeter P is 21 X and it's going to equal X plus 16 plus X plus 16 plus 2X plus 19. Okay, before I can start solving this equation, I need to simplify this right side of the equation by combining like terms. I'm not gonna do the inverse operation because I'm just combining what's on the same side of the equation. If you do anything on the same side of the equation, you keep the same sign. So 21X is already simplified. I don't need to simplify that. Let's simplify this right side. I'm gonna start with the X's. X plus X is 2X, and then 2X plus 2X is 4X. And then I need to combine 16 plus 16 plus 19, which I'm just gonna use the calculator for, and I get 51. So I get 21X equals 4X plus 51. So now I'm solving this equation, so I'm gonna start using inverse operations. So I already have only x's on this left side, so I want to move the 4x over to that side. So I need to do the inverse operation there, so the opposite of positive 4x is minus 4x. And 21x minus 4x is 17x, and it equals 4x minus 4x zeros out, and I bring down the 51. And then the last step to get the x by itself is divide by 17. And 51 divided by 17 is 3. So the value of x is 3. All right, the last thing we're gonna review is writing inequalities. So it follows the same steps as writing equations. The number that repeats is gonna have the coefficient, but we're gonna to have to think about the inequality sign. So this sign right here is the less than sign, another word that could mean that is under. This one is greater than, another word that could mean that is above. This one is less than or equal to, which it could also mean no more than. And this one is greater than or equal to, which would, could also mean at least. So let's read number seven and then we'll write an inequality to represent it. It says, Alex and Kevin are saving for a trip. Alex has already saved $200 and Kevin has saved $0. Alex will save $20 each week for X weeks. So that kind of gives me a clue that 20 is gonna have the X on it because there's that keyword each, it's gonna repeat. Kevin will save $30 each week for X week. So again, that 30 is gonna have the X on it. It says write an inequality to represent when Kevin will have more money saved than Alex. So I want Kevin to have more than, so that is greater than Alex. So now I know I need to write an expression for Kevin and make it greater than Alex. So I'm gonna go back through the problem and I'm gonna look for the information it gave me about Kevin. So it says Kevin has saved zero dollars, but he's going to save $30 each week. So Kevin is just 30X to represent his situation. And I want to know when that is greater than Alex Alex has already saved $200, so he is starting with 200, and he's going to save another $200 or $20 each week for X week. So he's gonna add on 20X to that. So there is your inequality, or if you flip the order and flip the inequality sign, it would also work. So another way you could write this would be 200 plus 20x is less than 30x because that is still showing that Kevin is more than Alex. Or it would read as Alex is less than Kevin, which is the same thing as Kevin being more than Alex. 
All right, one more. It says a streaming service is offering two different movie download plans. Plan C costs $1.50 per movie with no additional fee. Plan D costs $1 per movie plus an additional $10 fee. The total cost for the streaming service depends on the number of movies M downloaded. Write an inequality to represent when plan D would cost less than plan C. So let's go back through the problem and write an expression for plan D and plan C now. I know that it's going to be the less than sign right here as long as I have plan D on the left and plan C on the right. So let's go through and read about plan D. Plan D costs a dollar per movie. So there's that keyword per, so it's gonna be one X or just X plus an additional $10 fee. So that's gonna be plus $10. And we want to know when that is less than plan C. Plan C costs $1.50 per movie. So that's gonna be $1.50 X with no additional fee. So we don't have to add anything else. So there's the first way you could write the inequality or we could put plan C first and we would just flip the inequality sign so that plan C is more than plan D, which was X plus 10. So either of those would work.